Hello and welcome. This is Ashraf Jindali, and this is our third episode of Post Process with me. In this episode, I will be showing you how I'm going to process that image. There are some different techniques that I want to add. You may use it or you may not use it, but it's good to know about it because this technique will help you to pop up some details uh, in your image and it will help you to sharpen your image. So let's get started. Okay, so as usual, we will start by um, going to the lens correction and enable the profile uh, correction and remove the chromatic abrasion. That's the first thing we do. And as you know, previously from my uh, you know other tutorials that I like to um, you know choose one of those uh, you know profile which is in the camera calibration. Uh, if I use the camera landscape, that will make the colors more, uh, you know, uh, saturated and in the shadows, they will become more dark. Um, if we go to the camera standard, you know, I like to keep on comparing between the Adobe standard and see which one is better for me. Anyway, I like uh, the Adobe standard in this image and I will tend to, you know, increase the saturation uh, of the blue because that will you know add some nice colors to it now what I need to do as well is to make sure that the camera sorry uh, to make sure that the uh, white balance is done properly so normally with this image either I can choose something gray out of whatever I can find in my image unless if I did use a gray card before I shoot that image. But anyway, I will be using the, uh, you know, that uh, salt kind of thing in our reference. As you can see, I don't click on the bright area. I try to click on the darker area. Uh, that will be much more accurate in doing your white balance. Now, white balance should be fine. And as I said previously, maybe I said that or not, in landscape, there is no, uh, you know, white, proper white balance. It's up to you. It's depending on the mood that you, you want to add in your image. Maybe you make it cold kind of image or uh, warm kind of image. Now, I will be uh, decreasing the highlights because I need more details in the sky, as you can see. And if I, if I want, I can increase uh, the shadow a little bit because... If I increase it too much, I will be adding more noise to the image. And that's enough because in the shadows in here, I can see some details, which is more than enough. Now, what I will be doing as well is going with the whites, pressing the uh, option or alt, click on the white and move until I will see some little of white and then I will stop. Then I will be moving with the blacks to the opposite direction until I see a little of black and then I will stop. So until now, this is the before. Come on. Yes, this is the before and this is the after. Okay. I think the before was something different, not the original image. Anyway, forget what I said. Now, I will not be dealing with the clarity right now because I want the details to be in some specific places. So in this time, I'm not be uh, I'm not gonna use the clarity or even the saturation. Now it's time to remove some noise if the noise is available in the image. So um, in that image, the amount of noise I can see it can be around like 15% or 10%. Let's say 15. That should be enough for that image. And let me make sure that my horizon is level so I click on level if it is yes a little bit of adjustment was there and that's it in Lightroom now it's time to take this image to Photoshop so I will right click edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop CC that's what I have 
Now I'm going to Photoshop because there are some effects which I need to use. It can be used in Lightroom because I will be dealing with the, um, um, what do you call it? We, with the filter from the uh, Color Effects Pro, which is from Nick Software, bought by Google. Uh, that, uh, the Color Effects Pro, I will be able to get more details through a kind of, um, you know, recipe I have. Uh, in that filter which I will be giving you the settings you can uh, do exactly the same or at least you can understand what's the point of it and you can do your own kind of recipe so we are almost there and this is the image now now what I need to do is usually take a copy of that layer so I don't want to uh, play with the original image so you can grab the uh, background and just uh, drop it on this icon which is here which looks like a paper and bent from down or you can just simply press the command or control J and that will duplicate your layer now you go to filters and make sure that you did install the Nick software uh, you know um, application and you, you will choose the color FX Pro now in here you will find some uh, filters different different filters and on the right side you will find which filters has been used okay right now we have uh, maybe by default the software is uh, choosing it it's the uh, brilliance or warmth that mainly will deal with the color of your image uh, either you will make it to the warm kind of thing or uh, you know to the um, cold uh, kind of effect but the recipe that I have and let me show you here in the filter list you'll have different different type of filters one of them is what you have seen is the brilliance uh, or warmth uh, there is something like the detail extractor and so many other things it's always best to try each one of them because each one of them has its own effect now the recipe that I have done which is somewhere in here. Okay, this is the one. I call it the super details. Now, what does it contain? Now, it contains the brilliance warmth. It contains the uh, graduated uh, ND filter. And you have the detail extractor. And finally, you have the tonal contrast. Let's see what each one of them does. Now, let's go to the br uh, brilliance and... Uh, warmth if i switch it off you will find that mainly it is dealing with the colors so it's adding some little kind of effect of colors and what i have done is that in the saturation this is the saturation field i just put it to 11 percent just a little slightly adding some saturation and the way the saturation here is a little bit equivalent to the vibrance in lightroom because it is a smart kind of saturation now you can either have the your image go to the uh, cold effect or to the warm effect so this is the direction you can go with either to the right or to the left this is your preference there is no setting for that it is your own preference once again now and also it's good to uh, you know play with the uh, per perpetual uh, saturation it also uh, you know it adds a saturation in, in, in an also smart kind of way now the gradient ND filter is uh, again uh, you know as it mentions by itself now you can see that you will be able to add a gradient uh, where from it starts from top to bottom and it's it's in here that where you need to specify how it's going to be so you 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 have the upper tonality you either make it start from up and the lower you can make it start from bottom so it's up to you to say how much percentage of the image you want it to start either from the upper part or from the lower part okay um, these are all like shifting the gradient uh, wherever you want uh, so again it's good to uh, play with that because it will darken the sky and it will add more details to it. So this is before 
what you will find in this image just a little little effect it's not going to make us really huge kind of drama so this is after look at the sky now when it's uh, you know adding so you can see it is darkening the upper part of your uh, of your image now if we go to the detail extractor now this is the place where the detail extractor and the tonal contrast that's the place where you will be adding more details to pop up in your image now in the detail extractor you can increase the percentage uh, very slightly make sure you don't overdo it because it will not look nice uh, the contrast is also uh, need, you need to increase it what I have done is I increase it by 6% and a little bit of saturation will not harm now the last thing is the uh, tonal and contrast now this is a thing as I said again it is nothing that I can give you a certain numbers for you to try it is your preference that you need to Play with each slider and see what effect is going to have on your image so you play with these sliders they are very easy to understand you have the highlights whatever effect is gonna happen is gonna happen on the highlights only so you need to either make the highlights become brighter or you need to make it uh, more darker this is the place where you will play with that now again you don't need to go very crazy with that slight kind of effect is more than enough and it will really make a huge difference the same thing with the midtones and the shadows okay now after doing that and taking you the, the type of uh, you know effect that you like in your image it's time to say okay now you'll see immediately after that what was the shape of your image and uh, how it's going to look like after adding uh, this filter it does take time because as you know, I have a D800 and each and every image is around 75 megabytes. So post-processing is a little bit pain for me. It takes a lot of time. But hopefully you have a lower resolution kind of image which does make things much more faster. So after this is done, definitely and 100% the effect it's going to be too much because this is how we normally do we go with things more further than what we require so we have to lower the opacity and the way that I do that is that I go with the opacity all the way to the zero and gradually start adding a little bit of the effect to see where I need or what does really satisfy me definitely the hundred percent it will look odd it will not look nice and plus what I will be doing right now is that I will not be adding this effect of the uh, Color Effects Pro on the whole image. I will be choosing certain places. Okay. So it's about to finish. Come on. This is the pain that I'm in. It takes a lot of time. So we are almost there. Okay. So this is the effect that we got. So this is the before and this is after. As you can see, it's extremely nice on the sky. I don't like it on the sea because I normally like to see the sea, uh, you know, more smooth than that. Okay, I don't like the effect what really happens in this area. I like it to be um, less contrast and less details in this area, but I do love it, especially at this uh, you know left side of the image so as we normally do what we're gonna uh, add we're gonna add a uh, mask but I'm pressing right now the option or alt and then I will click on the mask that will automatically add a black mask now I will be brushing I will use the brush by pressing the letter B or I will choose the brush from here and I will be brushing with white I will be choosing 100% okay and I will uh, brush on the sky because I did like the effect on the sky make sure that you are using a uh, brush with hardness zero okay so I will add that effect as well on this shape and as you can see how it is really making a beautiful effect uh, on the um, uh, because it's really popping the details in this area okay uh, make sure that you don't reach 
um, you know the the background because uh, if if you can really see the image is somehow kind of layers this is one layer and down here is another layer and finally here we have a third layer maybe we can have or we can mention this kind to be a fourth layer but we have different layers I want to give a feeling that the image has somehow a kind of three-dimensional effect so what I will be doing is that I will choose now a smaller uh, brush and I will brush with black because I don't want that effect to be in this area so I'll make sure that it is happening on uh, exactly the place where it is closer to the lens because that's what we did mention it's the first layer that we are dealing with okay so that I will make sure that the effect is happening only on the shape that you can see the shape of the salt which I don't know I call it that looks like a cone so just make sure that this effect is really happening on the uh, you know the layer that it's closer to the uh, to your lens as you can see I did brush on all over the place but I want this detail to happen only on this area okay so if I want to see my mask I can press the alt and click that will show me how the mask look like so I can know almost like you know the effect is really happening on the areas that I want only anyway that should be fine I don't need to be that much perfect okay so I did this effect on the sky as you can see it's on the sky and the shape which is on the left side so immediately you can see that it did make a really good effect but remember the effect is really too much so I go the opacity all the way to zero and gradually try to add uh, you know or see where I can be really satisfied with this effect I think around here is more than enough so 63 percent is more than enough you can look at it this is before and after a very slight effect still you can see the effect of it and how really strong it is imagine how what was at 100 percent now what i need to do is to do some sharpening more sharpening to the image if i zoom in 100 percent okay i i feel that this shape still requires more sharpening so what I will do, I will be adding the sharpening uh, to again some certain areas in the image. Definitely not the sky, definitely not the sea, but maybe in this area which is which has the small rocks and more specifically in the left side of the image. So the way that I will teach you to do the sharpening in Photoshop is that you need to take a copy of the whole thing that we have done by pressing Shift, Alt, Command or Control N and still I'm pressing the same thing the shift alt uh, command and then I'll press the letter E now in that case I will have a stamp of all what I have beneath uh, and I will have exactly the where I have reached with the image as one layer now I will be choosing filter and then I will go to other and this technique is called the high pass uh, you know uh, technique for doing the um, you know sharpening now uh, if you want the effect to be really small effect you go with the radius to around uh, you know 1.5 maximum to but I don't really prefer you reach to uh, something where you know to 2 percent I thought sorry 2 pixels from 1 to 1.5 is more than enough especially if you are using a a high resolution image if you are using low resolution image you have to go below one okay if you want that effect that sharpening effect to be really strong you can go with radius somehow like till 20 or 15 or even 10 so now at 1.5 radius I will say okay and nothing happened but let's zoom in I'll zoom in 100% and as you can see you can see the edges only of the of the image wherever the edges are available that is that exactly where the effect is going to happen so to have the effect to work you can choose normal sorry you can choose the blending mode to be either overlay which is the lowest effect is going to be and the highest effect is going to be on linear light let's choose linear light and see what really happened I will zoom in 100% and 
and I will be in this area which is this one so this is before and this is after really awesome really amazing kind of way of doing your sharpening you will get a huge amount of details from your image again this is before and this is after so you get really nice nice kind of sharpening to your image now you can lower the opacity of that to somewhere like 70 percent again this is your taste no one tells you uh, what you need to do or what not to do and again I need this effect everywhere in the image except the sky and water so I will add a mask and the mask I will uh, paint with black okay so uh, painting with black will remove the effect uh, on the sky as well as water because I don't need it to be you know so let me see the mask uh, by pressing alt so I did miss these areas so I will clean them properly and that's a good thing to view your mask and see did you paint properly or not okay so again alt and click now this is until now the sharpening is happening on this area and all the uh, you know uh, rocky kind of uh, place now um, what more do I need to do definitely I need to clean my image as you can see some people they reach to this area and I don't know they have dropped some trash to clean the trash easily you can simply uh, add a new layer okay you will choose by starting you know you start with the easy kind of thing which is the uh, you know healing brush and you will make sure that you are sampling all layers and you will come to the thing that you want to remove a brush above it and cross your fingers hopefully that will work some cases it will work some cases it will not work if it does not work then the second thing is to use your stamp tool now for this side of image it seems to be fine I, I'm, I'm not gonna perfect it it's, it's more than enough for me uh, because I'm zoomed in 100% now let's try the same thing with this bottle and we'll see what will be the effect and again this thing is so easy to do it with the stamp tool again it's a good job has been done by Photoshop and I think that's it with cleaning the image and definitely I will require to make sure that I don't have any uh, spots this is one spot make sure that you remove them as I said this will degrade your image if you have any uh, you know uh, dirty spots on your lens or your sensor so you make sure that you remove them from your image okay you can clearly see it when you are moving with the image like like so this is another one so as I said make sure that your image is clean and there are no any sensor spots or whatsoever so now I did clean the image what more do I think I need to do with that I think this is somehow more than enough so after that is that we're gonna save it and take it back to Lightroom so I'm gonna save that by pressing the Ctrl or command S now after saving the image that image will be taken to uh, Lightroom and a small thing needs to be done inside Lightroom because right now your eyes are going everywhere in the image but I need to direct your eyes in a certain place and yes you have guessed it which is on the left side so once it is saved I will be going to Lightroom okay done so now going to Lightroom this is our image entering inside Lightroom okay so what I will be doing I will lower the exposure a little bit like half stop like so and then I will grab the radial filter and I will add let's say like 0.80 and I will add this radial kind of thing I like to I don't want it to be like that somewhere in here because you can see this area now became bright I don't need it to be bright I just I want to make sure that uh, you know this uh, kind of thing I don't know what you call it is going to be you know highlighted so I can reduce the circle a little bit from this side okay so if I want to see what did I do this is before and after so just slightly adding more light to the area where I want to guide 
the eyes okay and finally I will add a um, post uh, what do you call it post crop vignette and that will make sure that there's a slight vignette happening on the edges of the image don't make it too much strong just be decent again with that so from Photoshop this was before this is how it came from Photoshop your eyes is almost everywhere and this is after now once you open the image you will be looking on the left side you may go to the right side look at the whole image, but still your eyes are going back to the left side where I need your eyes to be so this is for whatever we're going to talk about today this is how I did process this image as you can see there are some new techniques that I taught you today I hope that it is helpful for you so you can you know have your own taste in your image don't forget to subscribe if you still did not subscribe don't forget to press like if you really did like uh, this uh, video and that will really help me um, because you know the video will become uh, seen by many people because of your likes and that will really help so I can still on continue doing more tutorials for you guys thank you for watching and have a nice day